Hello, and welcome to Puppet 6. My name is Bob Hendry, and I'll be your host, your tour guide, your accomplice, and your general partner in crime as we learn all about automated configuration management using Puppet. If you're still manually configuring all your servers, I'll try to put you into the 21st century and introduce you to DevOps, and more importantly, using Puppet to automate the configuration process of both your on-premises and your cloud-based servers. Now we have a lot to cover. Hey, that's me. How does my hair look? Before we get started, let me introduce myself. Thankfully, I'll spare you my whole resume, but I'll sit on a few points of what I do and what led me to here. My name is Bob, and I've been writing software for too long of a time now. Now along the way, I started writing about my experiences and became an accidental technology writer. I'm completely obsessed with new technologies and products. I'm the guy that downloads or sets up an account to try something, well, just because. I've worked in waterfall and in agile shops and in doing my best to unagile myself. I love training and I get a ton of satisfaction at teaching new skills and I learn a ton along the way. Now here we go. Let's look at what we're going to cover in this course. Now most of this course will be demo based. I will use slides but only to illustrate points. I will try not to be overly reliant on the use of slides. I rather us look at real world examples. Now we do have a lot to cover. Now in the first portion of this course, I'm going to talk about and discuss and demonstrate building the Puppet environment. Now this is very important because we're going to talk about the different flavors of Puppet and how they all fit together and what's supported in each version, such as open source Puppet versus enterprise Puppet. Now, when we do this, we're going to configure different versions of Puppet and talk about what's called configuration drift. Now, what configuration drift is, is when we have a server configured in one state and somehow it gets configured in a different state. So basically, it loses its configuration. Now, Puppet is used to combat that. Now, moving on in the next section, we're going to talk about configuring the Puppet Master and the Puppet Agent. Now, these are the two most important portions of Puppet, with the Puppet Master being controlling all the configuration and the agent being the specific server that we're configuring. From there, we're going to go into Puppet 3, or Section 3, where we're going to talk about the Puppet resources. Now, in the Puppet resources, we talk about and discuss all of the different resources, external resources, that Puppet needs to configure itself or to configure each of the agents from the server. Now, moving along, we're going to talk about configuring the Puppet environments and managing files. So we have different environments that we can install for Puppet and have them configure different servers. And then from there, what we can do is we can have them manage our files as we go. Now, moving along, in Section 5, we're going to talk about different Puppet refactoring patterns, or basically renaming or refactoring Puppet production environments for different sorts of configurations, and also talk about managing code. So from there, we're going to go into the last section, which I call configuration management. Now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some more or less advanced topics in configuring the Puppet server and the Puppet agents to match each kind of configuration that you might have. So there you have it. So what do you need to know to follow along? Well, not much really. Knowledge of Windows helps. Puppet is also used to configure Linux boxes. I'll lead you through this, but I don't expect you to know a ton about the Linux OS or the Windows one for that matter. The more PowerShell you know, the better, but that's always the case. I'll assume you know nothing about PowerShell, at least in the very beginning. If you're a Windows admin, great. If not, that's okay too. You should understand cloud concepts, but you don't have to be an expert or an architect. The last point is the most important. Be open to learning new things. Keep in mind that I'm learning too. I'm just a few steps ahead of you. Remember, we learn by doing, by tinkering and making mistakes. This is how we learn Puppet, and we have a bunch of fun along the way. So what are the goals for the course? Well, I'm assuming that you don't know anything about Puppet. That would make you a Puppet newbie. My goal is to present Puppet in relevant bite-sized portions. On the way, you will learn concepts of automated configuration, DevOps configuration practices, virtualization, and writing declarative code in Puppet. 
This course will also set you up for success in your future puppet endeavors. It will give you a solid foundation in which to build additional puppet skills. Along with hands-on experience, this course is a great entry point into your journey through puppet. Now that's not so bad now, is it? Did I scare you away yet? I really hope not. If you're still here, congratulations. Because if you're like me, you skipped the intro. And if you're really like me, you skipped the intro and the slides. So thank you for getting this far. So you're ready to go? Let's get into the course and start breaking some servers, huh? Time to get busy.